Casey Ashmore here. We're talking about Texas crime and Texas consequences. So what happens when plea bargains, plea deals are a no-go? You have exhausted all of your or rejected all of your possible plea bargain agreements and there's nothing left to do except have these final pretrial battles, right? These final pretrial hearings over contested matters like motions to suppress evidence was the stop good is the stop righteous such that there was or was not probable cause that led to extending the detention for a reasonable period leading to further investigation and then ultimately some sort of a search or some sort of a arrest right a detention and then an arrest were all the steps followed? Did the state have probable cause through its agent, the law enforcement officer, to go through that process and then arrest the defendant correctly? And those battles are had usually at the end of plea negotiations. So, you know, this process is designed to actually be pretty quick because we do have a guaranteed right to a speedy trial and you know speedy trial can be a lot of things in the state of Texas and it then and, and it's usually anything but speedy but time is rarely your friend in this situation time is rarely your because you do need a moment to, to to get into the facts you do need a moment to start thinking about defensive theories and while extended delays things caused by the COVID pandemic those, those delays really extend out the, the trial process, but the fact of the matter is that that allows for the opportunity to dig into these facts, to, to, to sharpen the saw, to prepare for the battle to come with the state prosecutor's office over these matters that, that need to be heard before a judge and panels a jury like suppression of evidence issues like judge I need to know what expert witnesses they intend to call a trial judge I need to know if there are informants that they're gonna call a trial judge I need to know what what evidence of my other wrongdoings and bad acts is going to be presented at trial these are the things that you must you must ask and get rulings on it's critical that you must ask for them and get rulings on them such that you have protected your client's rights. So all of these things happen really post plea negotiations and at or before or during these pretrial hearings, right? Where there's this battle of admissibility of expert opinions, where there's this battle of, do I have all the information that I'm required and entitled to have under the Michael Morton Act, under Texas 3914, right, that allows me to know everything that the state of Texas is going to be throwing at me in advance of trial so that I can fully prepare or negotiate, right? So that's, that's what happens usually at the conclusion of the plea negotiation process is these final pretrial steps. And then the only step after that is the trial process. And that one is so significant. We're gonna, we're gonna make that its own segment. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. Questions or comments are welcome on any social media video platform you see this on and more on the jury trial process as it pertains to Texas crime and consequences in the studio coming up next.